Dr. Ralph Watkins. So he's my son in the ministry. Since I'm retired, he's my dad now. <laughs> Amen. Well. To his queenly wife, Lady Vanessa. Thank God for both of you loving us and sharing with us and just being who you are. <laughs> Can I tell you something, Wheat Street? You got the best of the best. Amen. Amen. The reason I like him is he's crazy just like me. Amen. 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 I won't go into all of that. Amen. Amen. To clergy assemble, to these deacons and to these men on this men's day and to all of you, my father's children. First of all, let me say to this church, besides your receiving graciously my friend and colleague in the gospel ministry, Dr. Ref Watkins. This church is a historic church. You know what happens to historic churches? Histor his historic churches normally live on their history and are no longer relevant in the here and now. But I'm so glad I found a church called Wheat Street Baptist Church. That is not only a historical church, but is a relevant church in the 21st century. Amen. Hope and soap and all of the ministries that you have here. Amen. Amen. I hear what you do for the least of these. Amen. You've done unto the Lord. And so I salute you and I honor you and I'm so glad to be in your presence because you are yet relevant. Amen. Amen. You met my wife and my children and we've been married for 44 years. Amen. She ain't, can I say it like this? She ain't tired of me yet. Amen. My children, Latoya and Tiffany, and my grandchildren, my mini knees, Anaya and Aiden. Amen. Amen. They know Papa love them to death. Amen. Ah, this is awesome. Amen. I was here when Dr. Watkins was installed. I was able to come and pray with him and share with him. And so he has invited me to preach, so I'm going to go ahead and preach. All right. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No of clay. Make me and mold me and shape me, God, for your will, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. In the strong name of Jesus we pray and for his sake. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And amen. Let me share two scriptures with you today. The first scripture coming from the gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 26b through 28. And it states, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom mm -hmm. for many. Mm -hmm. And then the second scripture is the scripture that you have in your closing moments in this, this month. From Acts, the fourth chapter, verses 32 and 33. And it reads thusly, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their, his possessions was his own. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. For just a moment, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For just a moment, I want to take your theme and the theme was when helping helps, the power in meeting the needs of others. But I want to talk this morning about intentional help. Right. Intentional yes. help. I was having a conversation with my grandchildren not long ago. And I said to them, Mimi and Papa moved here so that we can help you grow, be good citizens, and grow up to be responsible. And we want to make sure that you get good grades. We are here to help you. And all the help that we can give you while we are yet living, we will give that help to you. And then I turned to them and said, one of these days, one of these days, you will have to stop by, pick us up, and take us to church. One of these days, you will have to pick us up and take us to the grocery store. Amen. And one of these days, you will have to stop by and cook our meals so that we can eat. And without hesitation, Aiden said and blurted out, so that means that you will become like little babies. Amen, somebody. You will become like little babies. All right, all right. The first thing that got in my spirit was I was a little irritated. All right. Amen. Because I'm not quite there yet. Okay. Amen. Amen. But then, in agitation, I bent back and reflect on what he said. All right. And the truth of the matter is, everybody will need help every now and then. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere along the way, you will need some help. Yeah. Whether you are a baby, whether you are middle-aged, whether you are a senior citizen, everybody needs help every now and then. And then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you don't believe it and you think you can get over by yourself, keep on living. And you'll start getting some aches and pains that some, a doctor will have to deal with. You need help every now and then. Amen, somebody. Amen. I, I, I heard, that I don't want to be disrespectful, but but I heard 45 say he didn't need anybody. As a matter of fact, he said he did not need forgiveness from God. But brother, you just keep on going the way you're going. Amen. Everybody needs help every now and then. The first scripture, we find a request for special honor in the kingdom of God. And it said, 
that the, son, that the sons of Zebedee, yeah. mother showed up yeah. and said to Jesus and asked him for a special favor. Mm -hmm. Said to them, when you come into your kingdom, <laughs> let one of my sons sit on the right and another on the left. The left. Well, well, well. Now, it was not a bad request understanding who Jesus was and is. It could have come out of ignorance. I don't know if the sons put her up to it. So it's not a bad request based on the position of Jesus in the kingdom. But however misdirected, Jesus had to set the record straight about those who are kingdom people. He said those who want to be great in the kingdom must become servants. And those who want to be first must become slaves of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Do I have a witness? And so it is well known in the church that everybody needs help. What you're doing on Greek Street out in the community, you're helping others. And it represents the faithfulness that you have to God. But in any church, not this church, there are the faithful few who always show up because it is the right thing to do. Then there are those who show up because they want recognition. But I like the spirit of the faithful few. The faithful few are those who do their work without being out front. They work looking not for the praise of others, but that God would be glorified. They take what God gives them and work until the task is completed. Nothing seems to get them off course. They're always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that their labor are not in vain in the Lord. And so Jesus set the record straight. If you really want to be great, you have to be a servant. Jesus also declared as he was sending out the 72, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send our workers into his harvest field. Not only are we to spread the gospel, but we must be used and use all of our abilities and resources to help other people. Imagine what would happen if the faithful few became the faithful many. The church would be transformed and in turn would transform the community in which it serves. God is calling those who will serve well by being faithful to him and of service to others without seeking recognition. We are to serve with our hearts, our hands, our feet, and our mouths. In the second scripture, our text we find the people, the faithful many, serving with one heart and mind. Acts the fourth chapter, verses 32 and 33, said all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them. In other words, they were together and their service was intentional. Somebody ought to shout intentional right now. Notice, if you will, all of the scriptures selected for this month lifts up unity, purpose, and intentionality and service. It was not always this way. Even among the disciples, the religious leaders complained about a man who was healed and carrying his mat on the Sabbath. The disciples wanted to know who was the greatest. They complained about little children being brought to Jesus. They complained about his talking to a woman at the well. They had no compassion and complained about not having enough food to feed the four and the 5,000 plus. 
they would only engage the Jews and not the Gentiles. And the list goes on. It begs the question, what happened to get them to the place in the text today where they were one heart and mind and they had power to share the gospel and experience unity and grace as a collective body, the faithful many. The writer shares what occurred in the church, how the people began to share things in common, including their wealth. It is amazing to me that you could get so many church folk on the same page at the same time doing the work of the Lord. But this scripture serves as a reminder that with God and together, we can do great things and meet the needs of the community. I would be remiss right now if I did not remind you again that we all need help every now and then. When we're in a tight spot, we need help. When things are going well, we need help. We need the resources that God will grant to us. Do I have a witness today? How did they go from the faithful few uh, to everyone being of one heart and one mind? Maybe we should go back and review the scriptures that have been lifted up this month. First in chapter two, uh, we find a shift in the atmosphere. The change of heart and mind came on the day of Pentecost uh, where they were all in one place uh, and God poured out his spirit upon them. There were people from different places uh, with different languages. They heard Peter speak uh, in their own language yet he was speaking only in his native tongue. Uh, at the end of chapter 2 uh, the Bible says there was teaching uh, and fellowship among the believers uh, and they shared in the church everything in common. Uh, you can help people outside the church. Can I drop this dime on you? If you can't help people who are already in the church, uh, ain't no need of you going out yonder talking about helping somebody. Uh, you need to get it together in here uh, and do the work of God. Uh, you need to esteem others uh, better than you do yourselves. Uh, is there anybody here? No, you need to be together in God's house uh, so that you can be effective uh, and intentional in your work. Learn how to help and serve each other in the church. Ha! Ha! Then secondly, we find in chapter 3, intentional service outside the walls of the church. The Bible shares that Peter and John were on their way to the temple and encountered a crippled man begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. They were on their way to church. Amen, somebody. But stopped outside the church with intentional help. Uh, how do you know it was intentional? Well, the Bible said they did not look past the man or ignore him. But Peter looked straight at the man. Uh, man my God, uh, he looked at him uh, and got the man's attention. Many times on our way to church, uh, we miss uh, an opportunity uh, to have real church uh, on the outside of church. The temple, because we overlook the least of these, uh, make sure you hear and see the condition of those uh, outside the church. Uh, how do I know they were intentional? Uh, they looked at him. Uh, they looked at him. Uh, did not ignore him. Uh, they looked at him. Uh, Somebody ought to be looking today uh, to help somebody. Uh, they looked at him. Uh, they got his attention. Uh, they looked at him. Uh, we see your brother uh, in your condition. Uh, they looked at him. Uh, we see your misery. Uh, they looked at him. How do I know they were 
intentional. Not only did they look at him, but they gave what they had. Silver and gold, have I not? But of such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, walk up. It does not matter your little or your lot, but just use what you have uh, to bless somebody. It may be a kind word, uh, but blessing with a kind word uh, may not have any money in your pocket, uh, but blessing with a smile. Uh, you can encourage somebody uh, as you travel along this way. Uh, you'll have a witness today. Uh, all you need to do uh, is use what you got. Use what you got. Uh, did you tell uh, Moses the same thing? Uh, when he was at the Red Sea, uh, what's in your hand? Uh, you what you. Yes! How do I know? It was intentional. They looked at him, they used what they had. Then they gave what they had. Then it was intentional. Because the Bible said Peter took him by the right hand and helped him up. Words are fine. Stop telling folk, uh, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, stop telling folk, uh, I see you, I'm just going to pray for you. Uh, I got you in my heart. Uh, you need to reach down uh, and pick them up. Uh, bring them to your level so you can walk together as brothers and sisters of in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, praise his name. Service outside the walls. Then I read somewhere that you need to have the attitude of Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. In Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance as a man, Watch this now, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. The key words are humble, obedience, and servant. You must esteem their others better than yourselves. Be faithful and intentional in serving. I heard a songwriter break right one day a charge to keep our hand, a God to glorify, never dying, soul to save, and fitted for the sky to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, may it all of my powers engage to do my master's will. Then in chapter 5, we notice that people see the power of God in them. Just wanted to be close enough to them uh, to receive a blessing of. Uh. They brought the sick and the apostles had power to heal them. Uh. No one wants to be around you uh, if you are mean uh, and selfish. Got a bad disposition. Uh. Nobody wants to hang around you uh, or come to your church uh, if you are mean spirited. Uh, and you don't care about anybody. Uh, you'll have a witness today. Uh, but if you greet them at the door uh, and say, Welcome, my brothers and sisters, uh, they will come in uh, leaving for joy. Uh, they just want to be around you. Uh, have you ever gone to the grocery store uh, and you had a smile on your face uh, and you told the lady, uh, Wait a minute, you gave me too much change. Uh, let me give some back to you. Uh, then they would say, uh, nobody has ever given anything back. Uh, 
Then you tell him that's because uh, I know the man named Jesus uh, who changed my life. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, no, he'll change you. Uh, you know, every time they see you, uh, just want to be around you. Uh, just want to say hi to you. Uh, just want to shake your hand. Uh, hey, hey, anybody here? Uh, oh, bless you. comes the final piece. I want to share today which captures the essence of intentional health and service. It's in chapter 4. Pentecost chain caused a shift and hearts and minds were changed. As a result, people shared the same vision. When you all have one heart and mind, there are no big eyes or little U's in the church but one body with many working parts, depending on each other to get the job done. Then they understood that all of their possessions were not their own, but everything belonged to the Lord. Read in God's word, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I read somewhere, where he has carried on uh, a thousand hills. Uh, my brothers and sisters, do not be bound uh, by selfishness, uh, but be willing to share with others. Uh, when the church is in intentional with testimony uh, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, lives will be changed uh, and people shackles will fall off. Uh, You'll have a witness today, uh, then grace will abound. Uh, I declare today, uh, if you're in one heart and one mind, uh, and you don't mind helping somebody, uh, and you know about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, then grace will walk all over you. Uh, grace will abound in the face. Uh, we speak, you want to see grace abound. Uh, you need to let the Holy Ghost come in uh, and change some lives. Uh, do I have a witness? Uh, be intentional uh, about what you do. Uh, how do I know uh, that we should be intentional? Uh, well, because we serve uh, an intentional God. Uh, how do you know he's intentional? Uh, well, I read uh, that in the beginning, uh, he created something out of chaos. Uh, he was intentional. Uh, how do you know he's intentional? Uh, well, he saved Noah. Uh, from a flood, uh, you'll have a witness today. Uh, how do I know our God is intentional? Well, you got Moses uh, across the Red Sea uh, and led the children of Israel uh, into the promised land. Uh, how do I know our God is intentional? Uh, well, he took Deborah in a male dominated society uh, and made her a judge uh, because she had to lead them into battle. Uh, you'll have a witness today. Uh, how do I know uh, that he's an intentional God? Uh, because he saved Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego uh, from the fire furnace, uh, and Daniel from the lion's den. Uh, how do I know he's intentional? He gave David uh, a smooth shot uh, and a smooth stone uh, and knocked out Goliath. Uh, how do I know uh, he is intentional? Uh, well, because he gave uh, his one and only son uh, to come into the world uh, to save us from our sins. Uh, and he gave the son something. Uh, how do I know he's intentional? Uh, because Jesus, uh, the son of the living God, uh, performed a miracle in Canada uh, and changed water into wine. Uh, how do I know he's intentional? Uh, because he met a woman at the well uh, and told her about living water. Uh, Okay. 